But you know, it's Monday, and what do we do around here on Mondays? Well, we talk money, and we talk with Lauren Merkel from Merkel Retirement Planning. How are you this morning, Lauren? I'm doing well, Lou. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you really caught our attention when we're talking about our subject matter today because you're, it sounds like a, like a mystery novel. You're talking about a silent assassin. But when it comes to retirement, there's something you need to keep in mind, right? It is something you have to keep in mind. There's a lot of risks when it comes to retirement planning. The reason we talk about inflation in the form of the silent assassin is because it, it does just that. It kind of creeps up on you. It's not as an explicit risk as market risk. You know, 2020 in March, the market was down by 34%. Everybody's aware of market risk. Inflation risk is one of these that just kind of creeps up on you. One day, 10 years down the road, you wake up and things cost a whole lot more than what they did 10 years prior. All right, so uh, how do you plan for retirement like this? Because I think that is a, the big obstacle for a lot of people is that they say, hey, I wanna retire, but I'm, I have an income now. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough down the road. How do you make plans for that? Yeah, there's two main things that we wanna focus on, especially if you're within the red zone of retiring, which is about five years from retiring or already retired is one is portfolio construction. You wanna make sure you construct a portfolio that is inflation friendly. You want, and, and what I mean by that is inflation has only averaged about 2% over the last 10 years, 1.7%. So it's not something that we have been accustomed to for the last decade, but it's something that could probably creep into our inflation over the next decade. So we can't just sit back in a savings account or a checking account or a CD because they're paying literally almost nothing at the bank, which means then you're losing money versus inflation, not to mention even taxation. So in our portfolio, we have to think outside of the box a little bit to become friendly around inflation, not just stocks, not just bonds, but we need to put in some alternatives within the portfolio that's get, gonna give us the diversification so we're protected against the, the recession the next time we have a recession, but we can also get a return that's going to beat this, this silent assass, assassin of inflation. Now, is there anything in particular, you said that you have to get some alternatives, anything in particular that you kind of lean on a little bit? There's a whole list of alternatives that people can use. You need to make sure that you're comfortable with the types of investments that you're using, and you need to make sure that the investments work towards your goal. So just to name a few, you can use commodities, you can use um, you can use gold, you can use uh, precious other precious metals, you can use some types of annuities. There's a lot, a lot of different types of, of investments you can use to help. What, what it really comes down to is how do you put all these different moving parts of your portfolio together not only to balance the type of risk that you feel comfortable with and you need to take, but also to get this return that's necessary to accomplish your retirement goals. Now, you should probably think about this uh, from the get-go when you're starting to plan for retirement, but you said there's a, that zone that you come uh, up upon when it's really close to retirement age. Can you still make adjustments in that five-year period before retirement? Not only can you make adjustments in the red zone, but you can also make adjustments into retirement. Our, our families, the families that we work with, their risk changes all the time, which means their portfolio changes all the time. And the, and the types of tools that they use to create this inflation resistant portfolio change all the time as well. So even though you're in the red zone, all that means is that the amount of time that you have left before you're gonna need to start taking income from your investments has shrunk. You don't have as much time left. It does not mean that you just have to sit on the sideline and kind of let things unfold. You need to still take a very proactive and intentional approach with your portfolio to make sure you're accomplishing everything that you're looking to accomplish. How often should someone uh, take a look at what they have and how it's gonna affect them down the road? That's gonna vary, but if we're looking at just a kind of a rule of thumb, you wanna look at it at least probably every six months, but there's gonna be some occasions that you wanna look at it maybe monthly. There's gonna be some occasions that you probably won't look at it more than once a year. But, but especially once you get to the red zone or in retirement, every six months is probably a good rule of thumb. All right, Laura, people want to uh, get involved and uh, check out some of your classes, learn some more information, maybe even make a phone call to you and talk to you real quick. What's the best way to do that? Go to MerkelPlan.com. Lou, we have a wonderful opportunity for an online workshop tomorrow that we talk about one of the best inflation beating options that you have in retirement, which is Social Security. You have up to 81 different options when it comes to applying for your Social Security. And by making the best choice for you is one way you can beat this silent assassin of inflation. So go to MerkelPlan.com. Completely complimentary online workshop starts tomorrow tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. You can defeat this silent assassin. I love that. Lord Merkel, great job as always, buddy. We'll see you next week. Good to see you, Lou. Have a good week.